First suggestion, establish a baseline. Second suggestion, try using a great tool for programming. It's called an if-then statement. Third suggestion, a fine lookout. What are we talking about? How you can tie strategy into your communications plan. At KSP Partnership, we talk a lot about how you want to be absolutely honing the power skills all the time. And one of the power skills is strategic conversations. By that, I mean conversations about strategy, which means it should be part of your communications plan. But how to make it that way? Well, that's why we give you three specific suggestions about things that you can do. By the way, if you like this approach where we give you three specific things that you can do, you can do easily, immediately. Um, it's not always a little bit of work and it's not always really easy, but they are things that I know you're capable of doing. And some of them, you might already be doing something sort of like that already. If you like that approach, please like or subscribe. We'd love to have you in our community. You can also check us out at Leadership Driven Project Management Academy on Facebook. Okay. Before we go any further, let me just remind you, the reason why you wanna have candid and frequent talks about how your project ties into the organization's overarching strategy is very simple. It is the best defense. This is how you can protect your project and your project team from accidentally getting, shall we say, shuffled off lower on the priority list than maybe it should be. Having resources sort of accidentally get reassigned to other places, whether that's people, project, lab time, prototyping, manufacturing time, I don't care what. Being able to constantly keep gentle reminders in front of your key stakeholders and making sure that the situation stays the same about the tie between the organization strategy and your project objective is a way that reinforces the importance of the work that you and your team are doing. Now, I know that's kind of ironic because let's face it, they are the people who asked you to do this after all. But there's a lot on their plate, just like there's a lot on your. So step one is to establish a baseline. You're not going to want to make every single conversation about the strategic pie. But you can make sure that when it comes to things like change management, risk management, this is part of that conversation. Also, some of your stakeholders are gonna be intrigued by this new approach. Great, encourage that. And then as they are comfortable and as you're comfortable, that they remember the important part. That's unfair. But one of the baselines that you wanna establish isn't just how awful you're gonna be addressing this, but also, who is it in your community of stakeholders that is best served with that information? Where would trust be built by having this kind of conversation with a particular stakeholder? And that is huge. The second suggestion we made was to use something in your communication strategy called the if-then statement. Here's the best example of what I mean by an if-then statement. And by the way, if you're wondering how it works exactly, this might also explain it. If I hurt my finger, then do I want to get a Band-Aid or perhaps a 911? Hmm. Well, if I cut my finger, if the blood flow is not really heavy, 
If I have a feeling that I'm going to completely bleed out in seconds, call 911. If the blood flow is light, then get a bandaid. If the blood flow is heavy, then call 911. If then statements can be used in integrating strategy and strategic objectives into the conversations in your comm plan, put them like this. If a change is being requested by a stakeholder who might not be a key stakeholder, and it would benefit the project objective, but it might cost some money, then contact insert name here. If then, if a key stakeholder contact is suddenly gone from the landscape, and don't laugh, it happens. I had it happen. <laughs> then implement your strategy with your sponsor to be able to address the potential for changing objectives, possible changing of the actual strategy in place, if then. And then assign lookouts. This is so cool because assigning lookouts gives you the opportunity to actually mentor the project managers who are coming up in your team. And this is the kind of mentoring that is a step above how to reconcile a budget, how to reconcile a schedule, you know, that kind of stuff. This is project leadership mentoring. And you know, as well as I do, that project management is not a single title job. The best project managers know when they have to be and how to be terrific project leaders. So if you're interested, by the way, join the conversation at the Leadership Driven Project Management Academy on Facebook or subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm Kimi Hirosuzimski and thanks so much for joining us here. I look forward to seeing you again.